Hello, this is Ravi Sablani. I'm a product manager for Oracle Integration. Welcome to the demo of Robotic Process Automation, which is a new feature in Oracle Integration 3. In this video, I will cover all the steps required to create an end-to-end -end robot flow. The first step in building a robot flow is to create a project. Once you've signed into your Oracle Integration instance, click on Projects, then move to Add, Type create, enter the name of your project, and hit create again. Next, we will create a robot connection to an application. A robot will typically connect to an application to complete its task. In this demo, we will use Oracle ERP. Click add in the robot connections, select the default connection type, Enter a name for the connection, add valid application URL, username and password. Finish the step by clicking the create button. Now let's create a robot. In this step, we will define its trigger and the actions that the robot performs. In the robots box, click add. In the resulting create robot panel, enter the name for the robot. Then hit create. Next, we will define the robot's trigger, which acts as the interface for the robot. You define an input, which is the activity or event that starts the robot. This information comes into the robot. You also define an output, which is the event or incident that the robot produces. Select the play button to edit the trigger. The trigger panel will appear. On the input tab, click add and type PO number in the name field. Select the output tab, click add, and type supplier name in the name field. Then click OK button. At this point, you can also hit save to persist your work. Now we define the open browser action, which is included in every robot. This action tells the robot to open a web browser and sign into an application. On the input tab, we will set the URL field. This field is for the URL that the robot should open. In this field, select more options and then select robot connections. In the list, expand the entry for robot connection. Drag the URL parameter for the robot connection to the field. Then click OK. Hit save to persist your work. Now let's add a login action. Here's where you enter a robot's username and password to allow a robot to sign in to an application. On the input tab, enter the robot's credentials. Within the username field, select more options and then select robot connection. Drag the username parameter from the robot connection to the field. This field is for the robot's username for the application. Repeat these steps for the password field, which holds the robot's password for the application. On the same input tab, specify input details for the login action. Before we continue, open another browser tab or window and open the sign-in page for the Oracle Fusion ERP application that the robot will work in. Then back to the robot, select within the username locator field and select target the page element. In the target the page element panel, open the select browser tab to target dropdown, click on sign in and select go. On the ERP application that the robot needs to work in, point to the username field, wait for the icon to change to a target, then select the UI element. The recorder enters a value in the username locator field in the robot. Let's repeat the steps for the password locator. And now for the submit button. Let's finish the step by clicking OK and then save. We will now proceed by adding robot actions once we have logged in. So the next step will be to actually log into the system. Now 
This now becomes our landing page from where we will add additional robot actions. We will use the recorder to build the remaining robot action. The benefit here is that we can simply add actions by navigating the UI. The first item we'll add is procurement. Next, we'll add purchase orders. This will bring us to the purchase orders overview screen. Let's move to purchase order tasks and then click manage orders and click save. For this next step, we will require a sample purchase order. So we will stop the recording for now and navigate to the screen to pull up a purchase order number. When we hit search, we'll get a list of available purchase orders and we'll just choose one that we think is relevant. Either copy the purchase order number to the clipboard or write it down in a notepad. Now that we have a purchase order to work with, we will continue the recording from where we left off. We will now enter the purchase order number in the order field. So let's hover over there, add the action. The action name is not very descriptive, so we will rename it. Call it PO number and the target name as well. This step is not required, but it just makes it easier to read the names and labels. Next, we will move to the value field and enter the input variable, which is where the PO number will come from. And we need a test value, and that's gonna be the PO number we pulled earlier. Now we click save. We click search. This will also be an action that we have to add. Now that we have a single purchase order, we will pull up the supplier name. Add the action. This action will be a get text because we're actually extracting the value of the text. Again, changing the name and target name, which are optional. Just make it better readable. And we will decide to save the value in an output variable called supplier name. Click save. We stop the recording. Here you can also see that the robot actions have been added automatically through the recorder. Let's hit save before we continue. The final step of our robot design is adding a log activity, which will allow us to show the supplier name as the response in the activity stream. In the log activity window, open up the message attributes and drag the supplier name under the message field. Once again, click Save and then hit that back arrow to leave the designer. This completes the create robot task. Now it's time to test the robot. The first step will be to assign an environment pool, which is a computer where our robot can run on. For that, we'll give a name to our pool. And we'll hit create. And next we'll hit uh, add environment, which looks up an existing environment, which can be assigned to our robot. 
and for that we'll use one that we've created for this demo. The environment pool is now ready to be assigned to our robot. We simply take our existing environment pool and click add. This has now been added to our robot. Our robot is now ready for testing. Navigate to the robot, click on the meatball menu, and hit run. This brings up the configure a run menu. Here you can review the input payload, but we'll just hit run. Next, click on the displayed instance ID, which takes us to the robot activity stream. Now we wait for the robot to start and proceed with the intended designed operations. Here's how we can see that the robot has opened up the Fusion application login page and has successfully logged in. Next, it will navigate to procurement. You won't see the mouse movements, but you will notice the UI elements light up during each interaction. After clicking on purchase orders, we'll notice the purchase order overview screen. The robot clicks on pass on the right side of the screen. It's on manage orders. This opens up a list of orders. The robot enters the order number, clicks on search, and waits for the respective order to show up. It then clicks on supplier name, which becomes a response. Let's now validate the status of the robot run. We look at the activity stream of the robot operations. And we look at the bottom where we can see the supplier name as a response of the robot run. This brings us to the end of our demo. Thank you for your attention.